Hey guys, John from John's DIY Playground. Hey, I did an earlier video about the chip, the $9 computer, and a lot of you guys have been watching it and having some problems. I still have my same 2 amp source and uh, had been booting it up just a few times after I did my video and then I noticed that I had a problem too and it's the NAND problem. Here's what happens when I power up. Absolutely nothing. It doesn't do anything. The lights come on this device. That's what that blue light is down at the lower part of the screen, but that's it. Nothing comes up on the screen. So it looks like there's a fix for Windows now, so let's go through how to apply that fix. So here is the URL address where the fix is located. I'll put a link to that in my description below. But this is uh, the chip boot repair tool for Windows. And again, this is saying it's doing exactly the problem I'm having. It cannot boot due to data corruption in the U-boot partition or the NAND flash portion. So that's what the uh, things have been uh, going wrong with NAND chips. So it gets repartitioned, I guess. So let's take a look. We have to download the tool here this exe tool and while that's downloading let me point out it was reading through some of the comments and it looks like it's really important to follow the process here which we're going to try today just making sure that uh, the chips off it's not plugged into my computer then we're going to install the uh, the boot repair tool and then I'll show you how to connect the chips FEL pin to the ground with a wire a jumper wire and then connecting the chip alright so it looks like the boot repair tool is done so let's launch that installer and so yes of course proceed looks like this is gonna go fairly quickly here alright so I've got a device wizard looks like it's going to install a lib USB driver so that's important that chip is not plugged in so that install that driver gets installed properly and so here's the tool okay so what I'm going to do next is show you how to hook up the uh, jumper pin first before we plug it into the computer. So on your chip itself, take a look at the, uh, the labeling of the pins on the uh, GPIO bars and you'll see here this one pin that's called FEL. I'm going to use this really fancy pants uh, uh, jumper wire, but you can use just a paper clip, but just put it in there. And then the ground's located over here. And that's it. Once we're all set with that, we're ready to plug into the computer and start the reflash process. All right, we're back up at the computer now. So what I'm going to do is just plug in, instead of directly into my standalone 2 amp USB power supply that plugs into the wall, I'm now going to take that USB and plug into my computer. Hopefully, I know this USB port doesn't have a lot of power, but let's see if it can do the trick for our reflash here. I see the lights have come on on the device. I heard my computer make a little beep acknowledging that something is plugged into it. Um, so I don't see any device drivers being installed down in the tray. So let's just hit this get started button, button and see what happens. So, okay, it's making sure that we've done this. Yes, this is what we did already. Okay, step two, hook it to the computer. Yes, we did that. Oh, no chip detected, look at that. All right, so I'm gonna tinker with this and I'll tell you guys what I did to uh, to fix this. Hold on. Alright, so we're back in business. I didn't uh, do anything really other than let that antivirus uh, program called Avira, uh, I guess it kind of validated that this program wasn't spam or some kind of spyware. It checked it out and then I basically just let it sit for another 20 or 30 seconds and all of a sudden I didn't restart the boot tool and this popped up. It says the chip's found, let's continue. Alright. So, okay, it's doing the reflash process. I look down, I don't see anything but the solid lights on the chip still. It doesn't really show that anything's happening other than this progress bar. So let's be patient and see how long this takes. Okay, I just heard it disconnect from the USB. It's saying the USB device is not recognized now. And okay, basically I must have reconnected and checked it. It's saying it's finished flashing, so let's take it back to the TV and see if it's fixed. All right, we're plugged back into our display now, but remember guys, before you fire this thing back up, to disconnect that jumper wire you put on for the fix between the FEL line and the ground. Let's turn it on and see what happens. So I just apply the power. All right, got farther than before. We got that first initial little 
logo. Oh, very good. Very good sign. So looks like we're working here. Um, the chip is a really nice computer for $9. It's uh, highly recommended for tinkering around with. And um, if you have time, you can see more of how this uh, chip works in my other video that I did earlier when I reviewed the unboxing. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Appreciate your time. And uh, subscribe. If you like this video, hit like. I'll make more videos in the future. So this is John signing off for John's DIY Playground. Take it easy.